this is a video, just a continuance of what we've done before of taking the pump apart for a single diaphragm windmill for coenders. Now we're going to put it back together. Uh, when we've done the last video, I tore it all down. And since then, I've had a sandblasted powder coat and ready to go back together. So we're going to have um, three sets of bearings. I sanded up the, uh, the old crankshaft, polished it up, got it cleaned up. It's ready to go. Uh, the new piston, the old piston, everything, everything is reusable except put new bearings, diaphragm, and check valve in. So uh, when you get the Coender windmill bearings, they're going to have a diaphragm. Diaphragm that comes with it shows you how to put all this stuff back together. So starting off, what I do first, <clears throat> slide the, uh, the bearing on. This bearing goes on like this with the collar towards the set screws towards the uh, lobe, the cam lobe. They got set screws in them. Run them set screws down good and tight. Don't forget to do that because if you don't, and you can lock tight if you want to, I generally don't. Put them down good and tight. And you're going to have one uh, bearing retainer going this way. Put the other one on for the next bearing. And I go ahead and put the bearing. This is the bearing that goes on for the, um, that goes on to, to this part here on the piston. So the, the uh, set screw goes to the outside on that. So they're both pointing the same direction at this, at this avenue. Tighten it down. Okay. Next, slide the back that bearing retainer on. So you got the two bearing retainers. This is going to be the inside bearing that carries the weight of the the uh, part half of the weight of the whole unit. The other bearing comes out at the other end, and that's what carries the weight for your fan. And this is the bearing that simply turns for the uh, when your piston goes up and down. So I'll slide this inside the case. I'll typically take and I'll set my bolts, put my bolts inside the hole first where this is going in. This makes it easier to do it now. Slide the shaft in. putting the nuts on and just uh, you don't tighten them down just snug them down so it can't move if you tighten it down all the way now then you're not going to be able to get the bearing to float right on the outside so now they're just finger tight next Put these bolts in. Put the bearing retainer. Slide this bearing on. And again, this one goes to the outside, so your set screw is going to be towards the fan. I have set screws turned all the way out or it won't slide on. And I've got this file to where it just, just slides on smooth. Push it back against. Put the nuts on. Okay, now just snug them up. Run the inside ones in.
when you tighten that down, you should be able to turn this shaft and not feel anything, any restriction other than just the bearing, the uh, bearings turning on there because you're gonna have a little restriction with the bearings, but you should be able to turn the same or it doesn't get tight and loose and tight and loose. It just turns the same resistance the whole way through. When you feel that's good, go back in and tighten them up the rest of the way. Then you've got to tighten, you, you can't tighten these set screws up until this has been tightened up here. So now I go back and tighten that. So now for all practical reasons, the shaft is in, turns good the way it should. You're just gonna have some resistance from the bearings rolling in grease and it's good to go. Next, we're gonna put the uh, piston in. Get the bearing in already, got the uh, flange on behind it. Now, some people make the mistake of putting this in between the flange, the two flanges that does not go that way. This is gonna go in like that. So you put the flanges together, put this on the outside, run the bolts all the way through. Put two of them now because I put a third one. I'll just knock it out anyhow. Now, when you put it together, this piston has to roll up and it's going to be top dead center. When you bring it all the way up, it's going to be flush with this. If it's not, you can back this nut off. That's a jam nut, and then turn this in this nut and get it to the right height you want, and then tighten it back up. You don't want it too high. You don't want it too low. Probably the hardest part of the equation because you don't have any room to work in here. We got two of them, we get the third one in. And as long as the piston has the right clearance, we're all right. If you change the crankshaft, a lot of times I'll have a couple units tore apart and they're set a certain way from factory and sometimes you have to, you know, if you get parts in or change, you gotta adjust that play because the, uh, Crankshaft to be a little different from one to the next sometimes. Get this squared up good in here. Got the bearing ends in here square. I'm gonna snug it up just a little bit. Now, gotta see if it rolls up. I don't have quite the clearance I need because I got too tight against the one wall. There you go. Sometimes it takes a couple movements. Move it down good. All right. Now this is up against us, just as tight as it dare be. I'm going to have to put it together, make sure it's just right. But you bring it up top like that, that's top dead center. This plate's gotta be flush with the top of this part. If it's any past it, it'll push against this lid with the diaphragm on it, then it'll bind up. So next, the old disc that goes right here, check valve goes in, 
you have the X down like that. So when it goes on, it goes like this. <clears throat> this will go on here. Just line those holes up. And they got an extra hole in. That's for a, uh, this is the hole this is going to breathe through. This is going to get blocked off. That's, these diaphragms work for the ding, single and double diaphragm units both. <clears throat> get my screws out for the disc. Put the disc down on. Okay, so now this goes on. Now this unit, kind of got a hybrid here. I have, um, this is a later model check valve assembly. The one that would have came on this would have had the um, other type. This was the style that came off of it. I don't have the right lid for this and this is for another one. So it's interchange is gonna be just fine. It's gonna work either way. Now we'll put a lid down on it. Get the right sockets and the right fitting here. I go around, I put them on opposite sides like this. You can see I got them on all four on four corners there. That way, because that diaphragm has to, it's, you got to kind of work them in alongside it there because that diaphragm actually comes over and partially covers the, the bolt hole. I got them, I'll snug them down. When you tighten these down, you watch it, you don't drag it down until you start crimping this. You actually come down to where you just got a little bit of room between the lid and this the housing. All you're trying to do is sandwich that diaphragm in place and hold it in place so it don't pull back out and it seals up so it lets air through. And if you hear that, that's air getting pulled through the bottom one. Now, last thing I got to do yet, I still have to pull this screw out or take this cap out here, it's out of the top. Got that, there's the old the old seat that sat down there, a needle actually you'd call it to sit down on. So it's a nylon, white nylon disc that sits down inside on a seat that lets the air through but not back up. So it's got a step on it, if you can see there. That screw, the uh, spring sits right down on that step, holds it in place, drop that down in. It's got a no ring on it that seals it up, run that down in. And tighten that up, and we're good to go. Another thing I'll have to do about this, and as being as I've got a different lid for this, I'll have to take and and uh, move this pipe down a little bit so this lines up here. But still, you got a check valve here, you got a check valve underneath the lid, and everything's going to work. See, the old style has check valve in here versus up here in this assembly. Both all they have to do is they just simply have to stop the air from going back into the unit. So when that fan turns this shaft, 
you hear that noise, that's the air going in and the air going out. It'll travel from here into here and then down the tube and down the compressor. This in for all practical reasons is ready to go back and be put back in service. So if you got any questions, call us here at Fender's Fish Hatchery. Um, I put these videos together to help my customers out so you can rebuild them yourself. I also do sell rebuilt units here at the farm also for the single diaphragm windmills, the old style and new style both. So if you got any questions, give us a call. Thanks.